What's up everyone, I am Alex and today we will talk about the 13 settings you should look into when you get your new iPhone 13 Pro. This works with all the iPhone 13 lineup but also with the older versions, so let's get it started. After I set up a new phone, regardless if it's an Apple device or an Android device, one of the first things I do is to turn on the dark mode and this for two reasons. One, I like the dark mode, I feel like the normal mode is too bright, plus it is better when I use the phone at night. And two, it drains less battery compared to the standard mode. To turn on the dark mode, go to settings, display in brightness, appearance, select light, dark or automatic. If you go for automatic, then you can select sunset to sunrise or you can have a custom schedule depending on the hour you want the light mode to kick in or the dark mode to kick in. We all know that the blue light is not healthy for our eyes. This is why most, if not all, of the smartphones have night shift or blue light filter. It is good to set up a timer so that the night shift kicks in automatically. Go to settings, display a brightness, night shift and schedule. I have it on from 7 pm to 7 am and here you can select the color temperature, less warm or more warm. Coming from an Android smartphone, I was used with the app button or swipe up to go to the app gallery. iPhones don't have this option, but now they have the app gallery right on the last page. It does have a weird way of grouping the apps, but this is not what we are after. When a new app is installed on the iPhone, the icon will appear on the screen. The more the apps installed, the more pages needed and more time to find a specific app. Or you can do like me and create folders to group the apps as per your needs. Another way is to make use of the app gallery and select that all of the icons for the apps installed to appear only there in the app gallery and not on the main screen. Go to settings, home screen, newly downloaded apps, add to library only. This way it will keep the screen clean. You can add any icons you want on the screen for faster access. Just press and hold on the icon and drag it on the main screen. The app gallery is very useful to hide apps that you might use only once in a while. When you scroll down from the top right corner, you can see the control center. These are the shortcuts to the most used commands. At first there are only a few, but you can add or remove them. Go to settings, control center, included controls. Here you can add new commands or remove the ones listed there. Some good shortcuts are for screen recording, low power mode and dark mode if you want to switch it on and off manually. Regardless if you use Chrome, Safari, Mozilla, Edge or other web browser, we are all used with the search bar located at the top, right? This is not the case for Safari which comes with the search bar at the bottom, but this can be changed. Go to Settings, Safari, scroll down to the tabs and select the one that you want. Personally, I like the bar located at the bottom. It is super useful and I am happy that I do not need to stretch all the way up to the top to access the search bar. With the dark mode on, everything is as close as possible to black. There is not much contrast between app foreground and background colors. To increase the contrast, head over to settings, accessibility, display and text size and switch on increase contrast. If you do not fancy the effects used by Apple when opening or closing an app, you can reduce the motion by going to settings, accessibility, motion, reduce motion. This way there will be no animation when pressing on an icon or going back on the main screen. Some say that the iPhone is faster this way. I can't say that it is faster, but I did notice that it takes slightly less time when accessing an app or this is just the placebo effect. Let me know if you tried it and your findings. Since we are on this screen, another settings that you can turn on is to limit the frame rate. By having this on, you set the maximum frame rate of the display to 60 frames per second. Now some claim that this will improve the battery life, however I tend to disagree. As the iPhone 13 Pro has a ProRes display with variable FPS up to 120Hz, it will select the optimum FPS based on the workload and on the app used. If the display is set to 60 FPS and only 30 FPS are needed, then the display is forced to use more. But this is my personal opinion. You can double tap or triple tap on the back of your iPhone to perform actions quickly. 
go to settings, accessibility, touch, scroll all the way down to back tap and select the actions for double and triple tap. I got mine set up to camera and screenshot. You can see directions in real world just by lifting your iPhone. You can see the arrows on the street through the screen. This only applies to Apple Maps, not to Google Maps. You need to go to settings, maps, directions, walking and enable rise to view. Once you tell Siri to do something, you will see the reply or the result as text on the bottom of the screen. You need to go to settings, Siri and search, Siri responses and enable only show Siri captions. And if you enable allow show speech, it will show a transcript of your speech on the screen, something that was present on the older iPhones. To use the next setting, you need to go to accessibility, voice control and enable voice control. To create a new command, you will have to enter a face here. As an example, I use next. On the action, you can add a new gesture. Let's say swipe up and hit save. Now to give you an example, if I go to Instagram Reels, I can only say next and it will show me the next video. This command and gesture works on any app that allows you to scroll down and is very helpful if your hands are dirty or you are busy doing something else. The command works without connecting to Siri, it's only a direct command to your phone. We all know that iPhone Pro Max is quite a big device. It is harder to reach the top of the screen with one hand, probably impossible. The struggle is there on the other models, not only the Max. There is a way to work around it and reach the top of the screen by operating the device only with one hand. Go to settings, accessibility, touch, reachability. Now if you pull down on the bottom bar, the top of the screen will come down to a rich position. There you have it, 13 tips and tricks to personalize your iPhone. If you want to see more videos like this one, like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.